Welcome back to Around the World in 80 Telescope, a live 24-hour webcast that is part of the 100 Hours of Astronomy project for the International Year of Astronomy. You are joining us at the European Southern Observatory near Munich in Germany, and we are visiting some of the most advanced telescopes both on and off the planet. So now we are going to Arizona Radio Telescope, submillimeters telescope on Mount Graham. Graham. Sorry. So we are back to Mount Graham where we were a few minutes before. Hello, Lucy. Hi, good evening. Good evening. It's been a long 24 hours. Oh, yes. Oh, we, well, yeah. we still have another three hours to go. So. Well, good luck. <laughs> thank you. So I'm sorry, for you, we actually do not have a video to show. So could you start by telling who you are and then describe your telescope? Sure. I'm Dr. Lucy Zuries. I'm director of the Arizona Radio Observatory, which includes the submillimeter telescope on Mount Graham, which we're sitting right now in the control room. I'm also a professor of astronomy and professor of chemistry at University of Arizona. And like I said, we're sitting in the control room of the submillimeter telescope. There's an image here displayed on several of the screens. And our telescope is a 10-meter dish. And one of its main characteristics is its very high surface accuracy. Across that whole 10-meter surface, <clears throat> the RMS surface accuracy is about 15 microns. It makes it one of the most accurate sub-millimeter telescopes in the world. And we use it to observe at wavelengths between 1 and about 0.3 millimeters. And the specialty of our telescope is uh, spectral line observing and making spectra mostly of interstellar molecules. OK, just okay. one technical detail. Can you please make sure that you put the, the image of the telescope and the image that you will show later on your website so that everybody can see it? So. Sure, no problem. Th thanks a lot. So y you are observing in millimeter, submillimeter, and you're observing spectral lines. Can, can you tell us a little bit more? I, I, I read this is your main research topic. So wh what do you study with these lines? Well, molecular lines can be used to study a wide variety of different uh, astro astronomical phenomena. Of course, one of the most obvious things is to study the chemical composition of what of uh, objects outside our, gal outside our solar system and our galaxy and also in external galaxies. And we also use molecular lines to study how stars are formed, i.e. star formation, and how stars die by observing molecules around dying stars, something called asymptotic giant branch stars, and supergiant stars. And the reason why molecules are so useful is that they probe the denser and colder part of the interstellar medium that you don't see with starlight. And so they're looking at regions that you never would think exist if you just looked out at night with your eyes. And the other nice thing about looking at molecular lines is we have very high what we call spectral resolution. So we can really trace the kinematic motions of what happens when stars form, of the outflows associated with young stars forming, or with the outflows associated when stars die. And so that gives us a really unique way to probe what we call the interstellar medium, the material between the stars. It also has relevance for origins of life because our solar system and all solar systems actually form in a big giant gas cloud full of molecules. And so the molecules we study out in interstellar space may actually be seeding uh, possible prebiotic chemistry that occurs in solar systems and on planet surfaces. Could you tell us a little bit more about these prebiotic molecules? What are they and how closely related are they to our stuff? Well, actually, they're very closely related to our stuff. In fact, some of them are common organic molecules that we find here on Earth. Of course, we see things like uh, methanol, ethanol, ether, um, even a very simple sugar called glycol aldehyde, sort of and formamide, some of the very basic building blocks that would lead to more complex organic molecules 
and possibly to things like DNA, RNA, and other um, biologically important macromolecules. Okay. Uh, we have a spectrum of yours. Maybe we could see what these, what these lines look like. So this is the, the kind of data that you are getting with the telescope. Can you tell yes, us more? Yes, this shows us more. Certainly. There's been a lot of talk tonight about looking at the black hole in the galactic center, and that's a source called Sag A star. What we're looking at here is data from a molecular cloud near Sag A star, a source known as Sagittarius B2 North. And it's a giant molecular cloud where young stars are forming. It's very massive. And it happens to be full of organic molecules. And what we see here is just a tiny bit of a spectrum of a very large uh, spectral survey we've taken of this galactic center source. And you can see from this data, it's basically nothing but wall-to-wall -wall molecular lines. What we're showing here is something called, we call, astronomers call, the spectral line confusion limit, where there's so many lines, they just fall right on top of one another. But because of laboratory spectroscopists, we've been able to identify at least 60% of the molecules in this spectrum. And you can see most of them contain carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, i.e. they're organic 